welcome to everyone who's here. It is great to see you. I'm Andrew Crosby. This is the Regenerative Insights Circle. We go in two different modes in this meeting. One is emergent discussion mode and the other is presentation mode. And after doing this for three years, I'm actually going to present. So I'm thrilled to have you here. You should all know that this meeting has been a huge inspiration for me. So this is the first really public stop for this project. I'm eager to hear what you think, any comments, uh, of course, any way you want help. My intention is to just provide a short presentation of what went into third horizon earth and then to have a Q and A period, put any questions or comments in the chat. If I can pick them up while I'm talking, I will, or raise your hand. If you want to stop me for any reason. Okay. So let me share my screen and we'll be off. Here we go. So just, just a little bit of context. Third horizon where the seeds of tomorrow's innovation are planted. So third horizon concept came out of a book by some McKinsey partners in 1999, and it was admirably repurposed by a bunch of regenerative pioneers. There were early instances as well, but the transformation piece is really critical, uh, because I think we're all in that space. It's transformation. We're not talking about making changes on the edges. A little bit of my background, I've been in environment justice complex systems for most of my career. And I've been working on things that I described as seeking to help people better understand their own interests in the context of the public interest. So it was in a bunch of different domains with consulting, uh, did the first national daily on us politics, spent almost 15 years in the international trade and sustainable development domain. And throughout all of this sustainable development or some aspect of it was a major goal for me and it changed. So when my situation changed, you know, 2018, I started looking for what was out there that was succeeding sustainable development. I wasn't really happy with the ambition or what it was delivering. I had a lovely conversation with David Hodgson in 2019 and got pulled into the GRC. You all know, I've been doing these calls. One of the things that I discovered was this huge hunger, not for co-working, although a lot of people did co-working, a lot of people worked together and uh, had partnerships together, but people came with curiosity. They wanted to discover, they wanted to weave things together. And it's been really a nice aspect and an essential aspect in the kind of regenerative innovation many of us want. So I saw huge creativity and I was always impressed. It's one of the reasons why I do these meetings, just to hear that amazing ways in which people think and how they conceive of their projects and, and honestly, how they do things on a shoestring, tying together things that are actually really complex. Um, but I noticed along the way, people looking for analogs there, you know, what, what looks like what I'm trying to do that I could learn from. There's a really wide variety. So there, some people try to create these, you know, essentially killer apps, something that's going to really cause a systemic shift, but there are also people who've been trying to weave in traditional knowledge and bring that back and help us understand how, what people knew how to do at one time could be reapplied in modern life. A lot of sector-based initiatives, agriculture is an obvious one, but they're manufacturing, marketing, you name it, finance, many of them, even within the same sectors are connected and alliances, collaboratives, new ways of working. A GRC is one of those. You have tons of other approaches like sociocracy or different forms of governance that are actually trying to change the way people are interacting with each other. So I take from this. You know, this burgeoning demand, that's sort of my regenerative insight, number one, if you will. And at the second insight for me in this period of time, you always hear no funding, right? Why aren't investors coming? And, and at least in my observation, there's a shortage of predictable models, systemic designs, intelligible analogs. Right? So you don't know what you're looking at and how it's going to work from a traditional point of view, metrics, shortage of metrics markets and financial systems that are really valuing, maybe they're only valuing that monetizable bit of carbon or of product the output that, that is being produced, but not the rest of the systemic benefit that many people envision and are producing. 
Um, the enabling a regulatory environment is a big constraint. I think often people are not paying attention to that, but you know, our governments and our systems are set up for existing businesses the way that they were conceived in a century ago, not for those that we're conceiving now for the future. And then basic stuff like language, just how we speak to each other, how do we communicate? These are missing pieces. We don't have a language for regeneration yet. And so there's a, there's this huge field too. There's tons of people operating in this field, like tons of entities. I would hold that they're happening across every domain, business, government, finance, civil society, and academia, but most visibly probably in business and civil society where a lot of us are, but, but they're happening in other places. There's a lot of parts focus in my view. So not only, but there's people who are trying to create, like I said, the killer app, the thing, the platform the, that's going to cause a systemic shift. There's a lot of specialty products, especially for those who can pay, you can think about, you know, if you're looking for funding or impact funding, impact alpha, if you got the money you can do it, uh, there's bespoke metrics out there and so on. They're not surveying, I think probably almost any of us here. And then there's consultants, you know, it's a field full of rules and systems and consultants who can tell you what to do. And, and there's wisdom in there. There's, there's wisdom in all these things. So my goal isn't, isn't to dismiss these things. It's to say, these are all part of this emerging system. Pretty cool. But I think there's something missing still in place-based projects all over. So I started putting these pieces together and I put them together kind of like this. Vanity's facing existential challenges. I didn't start with that, but we're all here because of that. And the current models aren't working. And to contrast it with the way we do things today in the mainstream, regenerative development pioneers are incorporating systemic complexity and broad-based engagement as features to solve complex challenges, not as bugs. That's a really different way of behaving. All of you, you're pioneers. People are working in this space are pioneers. There's no roadmap. And so they're trying to innovate in entirely new ways. They have entirely new kinds of barriers, and they also face all the difficulties of being an emerging movement. So if we can focus on the pioneer efforts and improving the innovation environment and the external operating environment for pioneers, we can help catalyze the shift on some of these big issues. This is where Third Horizon is coming from. So this looks familiar to me because this is the kind of work that I've been doing over the course of my career in a nonpartisan way in all those domains that I just told you about. What we want to do is use that innovation, which comes from the people who are in the field already. I call it a validated source, evidence-based. What is it that's driving something? What makes it work and how, where do ideas come from and how, so that as we go, people understand where these things are rooted. Innovation for third horizon earth can be new tech, but it can be equally old tech, traditional practice and combined in different ways. So the goal that we're looking for is people who are innovating in systems across at least one domain boundary or sectoral boundary and so on. So understanding and sharing context, what's relevant for interpreting an application, you cross polity, fertilize and help people jump out of silos. You build a dialogue and a language and you can advocate at systemic levels. These are the ingredients that I've used before that I've seen work in this kind of situation. If we go to what third horizon is actually trying to do, there's three path change ways or theories of change, if you want. So align the communities create a language, cross-fertilize, draw in research that's relevant, save time for people. So there's hundreds, maybe thousands of sources out there. No one has the time to look at them and decide whether they're relevant or figure out what they're, whether they're relevant. That's something we're going to focus on. We have sections called resources, art, events, jobs. These are things that are happening every day. And what we're going to do is identify them say why they're relevant. Sometimes it's really evident, but sometimes it's not why they're relevant and provide this as a curated stream of intelligence for people. This serves people who are coming into the field, but it also serves people who are experts or advanced because it helps them understand what that flow is. It will save time and maybe provide new insight. The core, the fun work, if you will, of this is enriching the innovation ecosystem. And by that, I mean, 
identifying where innovation is occurring and capturing it in some way, figuring out how to translate it and make it accessible and send it out to the community or make it accessible to the community of innovators globally. The question we're going to ask is, how did you create this? What were the conditions that led to it? And they're all going to be unique, but my hypothesis is that there are going to be some common elements that we can pull out and make accessible to others. And then the other thing that this is going to do is provide a pathway for people with good ideas to get them out to potential collaborators. So if the system scales, that's how it should work. And then I'd say bend the enabling environments from the old economy to the regenerative ones. I believe that these regulatory financial standards, government activities are major influencers. Many of them are subsidized or set to promote basically old economy businesses. And part of our job is to act as an advocate using examples of it's being bent, if you will, and try and plug that back in and show what values are behind that. So what's different about what we are doing and what kind of organization this is? First, we're nonpartisan, evidence-based. I already put that nonpartisan means we're not advocating any solutions. That's not our business. Our business is to help look at what's out there and help you understand is this relevant and how. We focus on systemic innovation. Is it crossing domain or sectoral boundaries? We're not talking mostly about things or parts. We're also talking about how humans interact. We're talking about human systems. The key question is, how is it doing either a whole or part of what we might consider regenerative development? So it's cross-domain, cross-disciplinary, inclusive. So inclusive here means we're talking about where knowledge comes from, wherever it comes from, and whether it works for this purpose. We're also talking about being inclusive in terms of looking at innovation at all levels. So we're not just looking at the big guys. Actually, we're not mostly looking at the big guys. What, what our interest is and in, where is the innovation coming from? One of the reasons that we see in the events of smaller entities, representatives from large companies is because they need ideas too. So there's a lot of ideas out there and we want to include who is innovating, not based on who's the best known. Now we're a Swiss association governed by independent trustees. Right now, there are three of us as trustees in the Third Horizon Earth Association. So what can you do? This, this project depends on the community getting stories in some way. So it's curated. We try to identify stories where there's some demonstrable aspect of innovation and tell those stories and get them out to people. We can help sharpen the stories of those who contribute them. You can connect your colleagues to what Third Horizon Earth is doing. We're self-funded right now. This is going to be no paywall, no cost access, but that means we need to get voluntary contributions and philanthropic contributions. We're at the early stages. If you've got anything to give, we're ready to receive it or connect us to people who you think might want to contribute as well. We're going to be seeking grant funding. So if you think it's useful, write a recommendation. Let me take you through a website. Here are these sections that I talked about versus events, art, people, jobs. And I'll tell you about those in a second. Featured is the section that's supposed to be like innovator to innovator. And we've got a little bit here already, not too much. This is, this is the heavy lifting of the site. So this is what we really hope to wrap up quite a bit. You can see. Some of the recent things that we've done in the GRC context that are posted here. Here's the session that Carl and Poyon did a couple months ago. You can watch the video. If you want to know about Carl, you can click on that. Carl's there. Carl's under people. So the people who contribute content to Third Horizon Earth be in the people section. Those are the only people who will be there. It's not for financial contributors. We're trying to identify and raise up the community of people who contribute substantively. So these are the kinds of things that you might find here. The site is designed to be super searchable. Our search capacity isn't quite up yet, but if you decide you want to look at cities and urban stuff, here's everything that's tagged like that. And eventually. If you're looking for a tag, you can filter by geography or by other types of other types of criteria so that it's going to be to drill down and gather different types of starting points or references. These are the things we're looking to build. This is a high volume, slow motion way of 
bringing people into a dialogue about what is regenerative. We're taking things out of the environment that happen. This is an old paper. This is the one I just mentioned, the three horizons pathways for practice. There's another struggle for the soul of the B Corp movement. We're putting all sorts of different kinds of resources that people might find of use in relation to regenerative development. In the same way, you can click into any of these. Here's one. And we put a little summary. We're trying to put all of the where it's due to the people who are creating it. We're trying to highlight the things that enable you to connect with those people in some way. Events, pretty obvious. Here we are today. Here's some other future events. If you have a regen style event, you can click on it and it's there. You can sign up. Uh, again, if you decide you want to click a particular topic, business adoption, you can find all this information related to business adoption. Art, this is one of my favorites. And for anybody who's connected to artists, in my view, for emerging fields where often we don't have the words, artists are incredibly well placed to help us understand, help interpret aspects of the topic. So it's my friend Denise. I love her work. Here she's contextualizing the work. And if you want to know about Denise, here's her statement, click through to her website and so on. So it's organized like that. And then jobs, jobs is obvious, you know, it's stuff that's coming up in the field. I love our web designer. They're based in South Africa. They're really great folks called touch screens. Uh, let me stop there. The floor is open and sorry, that was really fast. I did it super fast, but I wanted to give anybody here a chance to ask questions or comments. If, if I may, one of the, the things that I've been thinking about with my own council for sustainability education, which is quite similar was the, the ethical problem of curation and selection and whether you have a framework with which you filter that. Um, Good question. Yes. The answer is yes. But this, it's a moving target also, Jake, mm. we, you know, we'll get however many people are on this zoom, you're going to get that many different interpretations of what is regenerative development. Uh, so this is a practice that we have to develop, but mm. one of them I told you already, is it crossing domain boundaries <laughs> or sectoral boundaries? Is it linking two or more things together? It's not just within a sector. It might be within agriculture, but they might've been doing something really amazing about community engagement, creating jobs, or regenerating the soil, localizing food supply, reducing car, you know, so that's a system, but that's, that's not what we really want to know about. What we really want to know about is how did he get there? Right. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to know what was the end result. What we're trying to get is how did you get there? So what's the innovation? And when I say innovation, I know it's an overused word for me. Let's say what's novel about this. What could someone else learn from? That's an even better way of putting it. Like mm. if you were going to tell somebody, what would it be? What did you learn here? We had a beautiful discussion like this uh, a few weeks ago in this meeting with a gentleman from, was it UNEP? I think it was one of those organizations that was planting mangroves, right? And, and we finally got to this point after asking like six questions and he said, well, actually, yeah, we had to create this council in the town in order to support this effort because everybody else wanted to come and cut down the mangroves. So these are kind of, these are interesting pieces that people aren't necessarily incorporating. So I'm giving it a little bit of the filter. <laughs> so it's, it's a cross sectoral cross domain. There's some novelty involved. Somebody can learn from it. So some of it has going to be about the doability. It's going to be more important what people are doing or have done than what they're thinking of doing. <laughs> If they're thinking of doing, then the interesting question is, so where did this come from? I'm not saying it's not interesting if they're thinking of doing, but where's the basis for this? Like if you ask me what it's like to be a president of the United States and write about it, nobody's going to care, right? And if you ask Barack Obama or Joe Biden or whoever, somebody's going to care. Why? Because the guy been in the position, he knows it, right? So there's, there's certain kinds of knowledge that has more, let's say more weight and more credibility than others. <laughs> All right. I think that's probably too long an answer, but we'll develop those filters. You, you said ethical too, <laughs> and I think that's part of it, but I don't even have an answer for that. There is an ethical part of it. I don't have the answer though. Christiana. Yes. Imagine that I have a little place, 60 square meters and 
I want to name it a regenerative space. Now, here I am, I have fixed costs. I need to gather the community. I need to show people things that they can do and how they can change their lives. And I need to educate from the mayor to the governor, to the shepherd. And I do need a budget. Mm -hmm. This is practical. And this is speaking from the heart, like, you know, the president of the United States, Barack Obama, here is Christiana. She has all this. Okay. And she's trying to do regenerative work. So I am saying. How can I be helped? How can I make the best of 500 euros so we can move and we can go there? So to me, I am bringing in the following question practically in a place, in a physical place and in a digital place, how can we move on? How can we touch? the lives of people so they can see it. And to me, this is essential. And when today I saw the question that was here that says, oh, this is like an incubator for a generative flows. Okay. I got very excited, but I am thinking in order for someone to incubate, they need to practice. They need to make. I have enough information. Now it's time for me to do. So is this something that you are doing? It's a question. Okay. So the answer is we are not providing services for individual entities at all. Our goal would be for your question. Your question is one that a lot of people have, you know, and, and what I would do is hopefully. I would try to find somebody who's been through that situation that could help provide something useful that you might take and learn from. I couldn't guarantee I could find it, but we're not a service provision. So we're, we're really not about helping specific entities in specific solutions. In fact, we don't want to be in that space. We want to be able to support people in their journeys by bringing them knowledge of or aspects of knowledge or practice that others have done that will be useful to them. So you are almost like a library or a resource room. This I is know. what I am getting here. Okay. So if I needed a library or a resource room, that's where I would get. Big difference. There's a huge interpretive piece in what we're doing. A library lets you walk in, look at the books. You'll be able to walk in, look at the cases. One of our goals is to make those things accessible to others who want to innovate. So one is understanding where the novelty, where's the innovation and trying to make it accessible and trying to get it out to the community. You know, as I was listening to you, I had an interesting conversation with Carl Clubhouse last week and I, I elicited his story and said, you know, you've got a great story to tell. What I heard from your, your presentation was more about your enterprise, but not your personal story. And I think there's a power to your personal story that why are you doing this? You know, what drives you, what doesn't come across on your website at first glance is that, and to me, that's the attractor, you know, your personal story. And this actually dovetails on what Christiana was talking about, because being an academic, I know the trap. We get wrapped up in ways of doing things. We don't bring a marketing mindset to it. I'm no expert on it, but I do know the follies of my own ways. And so as you were talking, I was trying to say, well, how could you make this attractive to people to learn about your own personal story in a way that would say, I want to be part of this ecosystem. So I'll just put something in here for, for brainstorming purposes only. So, because the headline to me requires an explanation. And then you have to say, well, what does it mean? I'm just going to share something here. I just put something like living in harmony with nature to do regenerative innovations, creating learning ecosystems for regenerative practice or whatever. And I, those are just loose words there and you can just play around with them, but it takes a lot of time to find a pitch, so to speak. I'm sure you thought about this great lengths, but I'm just giving my reactions 
about it. But what I'd love to be able to do, Andrew, is invite you to a clubhouse session where I can elicit your story about your own journey, because that's what I'm interested in. To me, that's the compelling thing. And I think that applies to every person you bring on board. What's their personal story journey about why the hell they're doing what they're doing, not just what and how they're doing. It's the why that pulls people in. That was excellent feedback. I really compressed the personal story for this presentation because a bunch of you know me. I agree with you. This is a story we're all sharing and I'm sharing it with you as well. To me, it's the why, you know, it's you personally. It, it sounded like the third person, not the first person. Right. And you go to the first person that compels, then you can get to the how and the why. Yep. But I'm just saying it becomes more attractive. That's all. Got it. Got it. Excellent feedback. Thank you. Hey, Andrew, this is so exciting. It's really exciting. And it's hitting around things I've been wondering about for a, a year or two in terms of how do we, you know, how do we tell this story and more volume kind of out in the world? It feels to me that one of the barriers, which is kind of people, if people understand regeneration, they kind of get attracted to it, but they just never heard of it. Right. So how do we get the message out there? So I'd, I'd love to talk to you more about a number of things, including like how can VRC be instrumental? Because one of the things it feels like you're doing is creating a public face to a lot of things that have happened in behind the VRC walls. There's ways that we can make that a more natural flow. I think that'd be fantastic. And one of the things that we've definitely talked about in GRC, but we've never had kind of the energy to get to is that the GRC change makers, the, the innovators, you know, anything GRC could do to make them more prominent, more successful, make people more aware of them would be valuable to the GRC participants, right? So how could GRC create infrastructure that helps make people more famous, kind of, you know, gets them more money, more notoriety, whatever, so that they could be more successful at their work. And it feels like you're doing these things. So I would love to kind of help any way I can. Um, and then one of the questions behind my, you know, my thinking has been the, the one that Christiana asked in the chat though, just like, what's the business model? How does this, how does this become sustainable to itself financially? Thank you, Dave. Yeah, let's talk. So the business models, I won't go too much into this, but we know funders don't like funding things forever. Right. So it's not a, a long-term philanthropy model. The other alternative is you pay, you monetize it, but I feel like that's against the ethic of what I want to do. And I feel like it's against the ethic of this community that I've kind of grown up in, in a way where collaboration and the value that people get, they recognize, and there's a giving spirit. So, you know, the model. It is a voluntary contributions, hopefully jump-started with philanthropic ones. And the way that we convince philanthropic funders to donate the, to this actually is related to how you use it and whether it's useful to the community. So it's, it's all tied together, but it's a tough one because it's sort of a wing and a prayer. A little bit like GRC. So I've got a few thoughts about other approaches that I'd love to chat through too. Because I mean, there is something to the, if what you're doing is promoting the change makers and the change makers have a business model, if you can support their business model, then there might be some reciprocity in there. Dennis. I think service is paramount. Like what services are you providing? Without service, you don't have a business and you don't have value to anybody else besides what you're doing. So that needs to be out utmost clarity. It does not come through website. It sounds like there's a lot of great things going on the website. And I think there are services in there. I think they just need to be forefront. They need to be upfront in, in saying, these are the goals of what we're doing here. We're trying to accomplish this. We're going to provide this service, this service, and this service. It can be multiple services, but what I'm seeing is like, there's a library aspect, there's a forum aspect. There's an aspect of incubation. I think even though you say I'm not in that business, I think you're headed towards that or supporting that in some ways. There's the aspect of like the forum, but the aspect of a, like a fan site, like, Hey, I'm excited and passionate about this field. And I want to promote all this kind of thing. And I want you guys to contribute to this. Like you see on fan sites, the content comes from the people who are actually visiting the site. So I'm seeing all elements of that. I don't know which is the service you're providing or promoting, or that's just like an aside thing. When I listen to you and I hear about your background, the analysis piece seems like it's your special sauce. You're going like. I can take what you're coming to me with and go like, we can transform that into something that is much more profound and actionable through my service. That's what I'm hearing you say. You, you correct me if I'm wrong, but that's what I, what came through of all the stuff you're mentioning. 
Thank you, Dennis. The point came through is super useful. There are a few services. I'll just sort of take them off. One, if you're out there scanning what's going on in the world and you're looking for any kind of analog or things that are happening, we're providing that service. Two, it's a contextualization site. Yes, there's news, but it's not just news. Everything looks like something you've seen, but it's got an underlying change objective to it. So that part of news, resources, events, this is all about developing languaging agenda flow in the community. So people are seeing the same things and looking at them and understanding some interpretation on them. It doesn't mean they have to agree with ours and then reducing effort on scanning. Uh, yeah. Like, uh, to me, I'm thinking editorial. Do you have an editorial context added to the news that, that you're presenting? Yeah. I mean, the, the other major one is identifying these innovator stories and trying to communicate what is novel, innovative about them. I'm also from Silicon Valley and I interpret that as an investor newsletter. Like you're preparing people to know what to invest and what to pay attention to, what's important, what, what to join, what might be needed at the time. I love the way you're thinking because you're, you're giving me a, another sort of cut. The third piece is the enabling environment, which is no one's responsibility but it's an important one, I think. And that's the regulatory standards, all these kinds of things that are systems, the legacy systems of the old economy that aren't adapted for the way people are innovating now. But what about those? Are we talking about like a regulatory observer committee type thing or? That? It has to be consistent with the nature of the organization. That advocacy relates to how are people doing it in other ways or elsewhere? Here's the most obvious example. Look at where agricultural subsidies, we're putting agricultural subsidies into old ag and degenerative ag and large farms. And we could have a much bigger bang if we flipped it around, but I would love to talk to you further because I love the framing that you're giving. You bet. Sure. Thank Rick. You. Yeah. Just a point of clarification in terms of this enterprise and relationship to the collab. It's not clear to me what that is. And just to build on what Dennis was speaking about, I don't know whether you want to go in this direction, but actually having a paid membership site where there's a nominal fee or whatever, you could use something like, for example, something that gets it out of just the website. How are you going to create this community where people can interact? Now, whether that's done all through Global Regenerative Collab, just clarify where you see this going. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that there are collaborative spaces out there right now. So the intention is not to be an accelerator co-working or whatever. The GRC is doing that. So part of the reason I created this is that there's already entities out there who are doing that. There are, there are a bunch of ideas for monetization and the major tension I have is how could you do monetization effectively without creating exclusion? for the people that I care about a lot, which are people who just are not going to pay. They can't. No, I understand that you can have free and, and sponsored membership. I mean, that's what Substack does so that you can provide things and people who can afford to pay can, you know, can pay. And those who can, you can still, if this, you don't have to, you know, there doesn't have to be a paywall barrier. Right. The question of people saying, well, I'll, I'll give, you know, 10 bucks a month or whatever it is. GRC is voluntary. GRC asks for a voluntary contribution. I, I like those ideas. And if anyone here has ideas, they don't create barriers, particularly for those people who are sensitive to barriers. So if anyone who can help me think about that, I'd appreciate it. I'd love it. Well, you could do it next week <laughs> and just do it in the forum here and and just continue the conversation and get the wisdom of the crowd. If people want to do it, it's up to you. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Also, I have a little bit of a suggestion. I'm having this model in my head about the 10 X type of thing. And I am thinking why not feature a mechanism that gives podium to the voices. You know, there is an organization, TEDx is very successful because they're bringing ideas forward and they engage the technology to spread it around the world. So here is, for example, Christiana, who's writing the book from CEO to CWO and W is the well-being 
Okay. So that's a shift because we're not only executing in a corporation, we are all also bringing nature in. So if I wanted to say this to the universe, to the globe, would I be able to do so through so, your organization? That would be helping me, attracting more people, sharing my experiences and contributing to your organization as content. So this is my entry. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, that, that is part of the goal actually is to do that, but we, we do it on a curated basis. Thank you. And if you know of anyone who inspired by this kind of work has a non-partisan mindset, who'd like to contribute to a project like this, either writing, researching, any part of business development, I'd welcome any candidates. It doesn't have to be full-time. Chick. Awesome. Thank you. We'll be in touch then. Good. We're just at our, about at our time, folks. I want to really thank you. Awesome feedback and watching as well. That's good. I have a, a board of advisors. The first time I showed them the concept for the project, they all said, oh, that's great. It's a good idea. You should do it. And then after I talked to each of them um, individually, it was clear that each had a completely different idea of what I was doing. It was good feedback, but that's why I had to create the site. That's why it's been under wraps for so long, because just telling you about it would not work. And, and you see, even showing you what it is, you got different ideas. That's great. That's the world that we're in and it's super helpful. Right now we have something concrete to talk about. I would, I'd love to pick up with several of you and just get your input and anyone else who has, I see a lot of things in the chat, which I didn't, I didn't really capture. I'm sorry. Cause I was busy talking with you, but I'm going to go through as well. And I'd love to loop back with several of you and I will be here next week, same time, same channel. Uh, and look forward to seeing you if you can come and, and if anyone would like to help me pick up that business model piece next week, that's great, but it is the regenerative inside circle. So we'll go wherever the flow goes next week. Okay. Thank you. Thanks everyone for uh, joining us.